Howdy, Heroes Heart. This is Kyle Ferguson. Today, I'm sitting down with Caesar Salads Johanna. This is from Diamond Hands vs. Granite Gaming, Game 4, Towers of Doom of the CCL Season 4. Cycles and this is a sixth pick, ten. Johanna, after the ban phase. That's all the information. Caesar Salad, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Kyle. So let's talk about the draft a little bit. Uh, Johanna got past the ban phase. Is this... Is Johanna that much weaker? There were patches since we last uh, mm -hmm. last had a CCL, and Johanna's been knocked down a tad. Yeah, so I actually joked around a little bit with my team, saying that I thought the Johanna nerfs were buffs, because we can actually play the hero now, or I can play her at least, because <laughs> I think she's one of my uh, best tanks and one of my favorites, because one of the few that can actually clear waves. But uh, yeah, she definitely gets through the ban phase a lot more often now. There is a bit of a... I don't know, Storm League calm that comes with being able to clear lanes on Johanna, because like Diablo, so many others, you're you're a bush ward, you're a, a, a gank patrol, and you just are not allowed to touch the waves, and you have to just sit there and watch mm -hmm. them. Yeah, no, you nailed that assessment perfectly. Like, uh, playing in the lower divisions, one of the most frustrating things is being a no-wave clear tank like Diablo and Murden, so Johanna, Johanna definitely uh, covers those bases. So what's happening here? We have we have Falstad versus Dahaka, and Yurel's kind of helping out right now. Is Yurel not the double soak for the team? Oh, uh, she is, but um, we made a really good adjustment to have the Falstad match Dahaka in the early rotation. So if they do decide to use their global to invade, Falstad can just fly simultaneously. Oh, interesting. So counter the global a bit, and uh, I bet you that range probably does all right versus Dahaka, who was thinking they were going to be fighting Ural the whole time. No, definitely, yeah. It's not a fun matchup for Dahaka at all. And yeah, just to match the global. So Stukov took this bottom lane for a bit while you kind of managed the middle. Here, tanking Towers of Doom. Where is... Where's your eyes the majority of the time? Is it management, kind of like we see in Dragonshire, or is it more managing a double soak like we see in maybe you know infernal shrines mm, yeah so i would say it matters less on the ma the map and more so the comp but with this comp uh it was usually like me catching mid because i can clear it a lot quicker than like their tank could um and the way we wanted to get ahead was playing topside a lot so it was more just calling out where they were at all times mainly keeping an eye on diablo as a threat so like even right here we kind of sense that they're sending a lot of people top. And if that's the case, then we get brought prio. Um, and yeah, just managing the rotations, being smart about ours. In that way, how uh, what what kind of becomes the comp in the bottom? Does like Stukov take on frontline duties for Lunara? Or they all just bail if we see anything? Yeah, it's more so like my job to let them know where Diablo is, because if Diablo isn't there, realistically, they can't create a kill with just Rhaegar, Hanzo, Tychus. They need some form of CC, so um, their job is just to get the wave priority, and uh, yeah, that's it. So you're you're playing like serious defense. This is this is very much like you might stick people on uh, players in basketball. <laughs> you're just stuck to Diablo and making sure you know where he is at all times. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about Towers of Doom. You never actually have to push on this map because the objectives spawn um, away from the building. So it's like, I think the big mistake people make on this map is trying to push too hard and opening themselves up to ganks. But uh, we're really just playing around the objectives right now. Interesting. So have we moved away from that heavy, heavy take the bottom lane style that we had, you know, I would even say since Towers of Doom got figured out? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely still the goal, but I think people just try too hard at the expense of opening themselves up to, especially in this example, like a Dahaka dig behind you. Um, sure. And for what? Uh, yeah. that, that, that's a good point. And then, of course, we're dealing with, you know, tournament play here and Wubby's Dahaka. Like, it, it's going to hit a tongue if it goes in. It's not like our, our Stormly Dahakas who show up, spin around a bit, and get kind of lost. <laughs> no, you're definitely right. Uh, I mean... A skill to hawk is one of those most scary things. I think if you look at the actual duration of the CC, like he has one of the longest stun times. So, yeah. So for Johanna here, we have uh, your build is you know starting to come together. We have that level one Zealous Glare with the bonus damage, 
and you're applying this uh, beautifully into Tychus here every time they try to get a minigun on you. Is there anything else that's threatening to Johan on the enemy side that you're really watching for? Uh, in their comp, not really, I'll be honest. I kind of was able to do whatever I wanted, and you'll see like later I just kind of sprint into their team and they can't do anything about it. Uh, so it was a good Johanna game for sure. Any iron skin things you're absolutely aware of and making sure you have for certain situations? Hmm. Sometimes if I'm like up against a wall, I'll be mindful of it, but really it was just, it's more of an intuition thing at this point for me. Uh, I, I'm sorry, it kind of doesn't help a lot, but it's like I kind of just train myself to know when to do it. It's hard to describe those exact moments that it's necessary though. No, that's fair. That's fair. So it's kind of a, a sixth sense, if you will, from playing Johanna so much, as I'm sure most tanks have at this point of Heroes of the Storm. But you mentioned the Diablo bit, yeah. there, and it, if your back touches a wall, that's probably a good time to be unstoppable. Mm -hmm. not disappoint me. After that level one, you got the Subdue. So it seems like we're still kind of in that, that similar build before the nerfs. And as you mentioned, now allowed to play Johanna being the big buff. Yeah. No, I think... Um... Contrary to a tank like Anubrak, I think her talent diversity, there's not that much of it. Like, I pretty much go this build every game. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just how I see her right now. You just go blinds at one, get subdue for... Oh, that, that was on the edge of the, the cast there. That was beautiful. <laughs> so the the subdue it's it, it, it's just generally good then it's not really even if you're noting like they went triple bruiser or, you know even the tychus being maybe closer to the front line and a higher chance of subdue you just go subdue regardless because when it hits and when you pull people together and when johanna's doing her job it's gonna work in the first place yeah and johanna's one of her biggest weaknesses is she has less cc than the other tanks so being able to make her cc stronger is nice and also uh it's more like opportunity cost too. Like the other two talents aren't that great as well. Sure, that's something we hear a lot about Johanna's. Uh, you know, some claim she's not even a real hero until ten when she has to stun, and even that is long cooldown, very expensive uh, window for the enemy team to mm -hmm. get something done. So now, no, here you're you're clear in the middle wave, and you have the help of that. Well, no, no, we didn't we didn't do anything with help there. We got conviction for the movement speed increased to twenty percent while condemning. Is this like a surprise factor? Um, it just feels really good to me. Uh, I think people don't real or like kind of forget it just gives base move speed. So being able to run faster than every other hero is nice. And then uh, having the speed on the W actually opens up for a lot better subdue opportunities. So it kind of synergizes with the level four. So should you get dismounted in this middle area and you have to cover that lane, you're going to get there with more efficiency. Plus that, 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 too. that little stun mm -hmm. that's probably, you know, that Tychus maybe doesn't think is going to hit them. Yeah, no, definitely. It, it definitely throws off people's uh, skill shot judgment. That's something that I didn't even think about, but it's definitely a factor. So here you had two charges. So what happened there? Was that like a, a bait blind to bait out the Tychus? Or are you not thinking that far ahead? Uh, I didn't see it fully, but I think the first one might have been a dismount. Okay, I'm not yeah, sure. yeah. So first one to dismount them, then second, uh, sitting with the second one in the bank, and then Tychus mm -hmm. activated minigun, and you had that other blind to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that right there was just like really well executed play by them, and it was nice that they didn't get too much off of it, but uh, they showed their hand, so it's like after seeing what they're capable of, it's like, okay, we know that they're looking for the arrow APOC. Sure, even so, that was a, a really good save and kept the Lunar going well beyond the point of... Uh, of our home games. I mean, in general, teams are just stacked this CCL season. It's really exciting to watch. As, yeah, you, no, uh, go ahead. <laughs> as you're moving towards 13, I'm curious to see what you pick here. And, and it kind of looks like you, you give it a little bit of thought. Yeah, you know what? I used to be a big fan of Roar, the increased punish damage, but um, Plus Hammer slowly winning me over, even though it did just get nerfed. But Roar did get nerfed as well. Um, I think they're both pickable. I would say the only talent that isn't pickable there is Holy Fury. Really? I mean, I maybe maybe just too much murder and then that's such a go-to there. I see something with someone, a tank being on fire and I go, oh, <laughs> that must be the main <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's just, I haven't done the math on it, but it just doesn't feel that strong. But on Murden, I pick uh, 
his 13 fire talent, if you will, uh, pretty much all the time. So the blessed hammer actually changed up a bit. This was back during the big rework, but for those not in the know, the thing that surprised me about it is uh, every third basic attack against an enemy hero creates a hammer. So you have this like auto attack incentive with Johanna, which seems so, well, different from the weave style you're showing here. <laughs> you know what, Kyle? Uh, funny thing about that is I totally forgot that's actually part of the talent because like you said, I uh, am so busy on Johanna focusing on my movement that realistically like getting three autos on enemy heroes isn't um, something I think about. I, I, I'm not accusing you either. I mean, it, <laughs> it is made up. It seems very bizarre and I can't think of, I mean, outside the lower leagues where there'd be a situation where Johanna's like, I'm good here. I'm going to stand right here for an extended <laughs> period of time. You hit me, I'll hit you and we'll be, this will, I will win that trade. <laughs> no, definitely. You're totally right. Uh, the the play style doesn't necessarily lend to the auto attacks, but I'm, I'm sure it gets some value. But we got the so the spinning hammer, two hammers radiating out, uh, and this is on your one button. So, do you tend to kind of think of this? As, you mentioned, you know, we're not going roar here, but we still want the subdue because of the CC power when it does hit. Is blessed hammer a little more pokey? Like you're thinking, I need that blessed hammer to pressure. Hanzo in the back there? Um, it's more so for a little bit of extra wave clear. Okay. And I, I don't know, because I've, I've never like sat down and really like try to figure out how much damage it's doing, but it feels like it's always doing a lot, um, even though it's like less burst. So um, I definitely pick it more for the extra wave clear though. So kind of like we're seeing with Blaze's build this season where it's not really about like a team fight dynamic even. It's just that there will be a situation where I need to clear a wave really fast because I've got somewhere to be <laughs> and this is going to help me out. Yeah, that and I mean, it, it's it's doing some type of damage like in the team fight. It's hard to say exactly how much because it's not bursty, but I think it's significant. So here in, in this situation, I'm not sure if you would be in the know about kind of Yorel's build, but they go into more of a team fight build here with the righteous momentum rather than doing what we might see as the double soak build. So it seems like your your whole team comp is definitely adapted to Falstad's now taking full care of Dahaka. We're gonna use your rel when we can in team fights, and you're in fact like just managing the whole middle map. Yeah. Um I guess I don't think this is necessarily by design, but after looking at it our map control is just insane in this game with the wave clear and it just was like the perfect storm. It's, it's hard to explain. <laughs> sure. And I mean, even now, like just the the level of awareness and calm, it's, it's worth, you know, it's worth flattering you too, but it's worth pointing out like your iron skin still wasn't used in that situation because you knew where all the assassins were, that Diablo by himself and even Dahaka showing up on the scene. You kept mm -hmm. that on cooldown because Johanna herself wasn't pressured. Yeah, and the point I was mentioning earlier with like me feeling very invincible this game was just right there where yeah. I kind of sprinted in the enemy team and uh, we win the team fight easy and they focused me and I'm still full HP right here. Well, and, and so. then you're you were holding on to your shield as well. Like you had all four of them kind of grouped up there. Everyone hit with a big subdue. Sadly, no quest complete, but hardest quest in the game. Uh, <laughs> And you still didn't rip the shield because you didn't have an assassin on you to kind of mm -hmm. help out and actually create a kill out of that situation. Not until Falstead arrived, did you say, now I have the DPX to actually do something about this? Exactly, yeah. And that's a fun thing, like what makes this game enjoyable is it's not like, it, it's it's all about the decision making, you know? It's not like, you know, who's pressing buttons faster. It's really about the timing of everything. Um, and that's exactly what it was, just kind of having the patience, waiting for a DPS to show up before I finally, uh, make my move, I guess. So you got Holy Renewal here. Hitting an enemy here with Shield Glare reduces its cooldown by 1.5 seconds and heals for 5% of Johanna's maximum health. Does this fundamentally change the way that you're using your blinds? Uh, a little bit, but not really. It's more just icing on the cake because the thing about just the way the game works, like I'm going to be taking damage usually and it just gives you that little bit of extra sustain, but my, my main goal with the blind still is to just blind the Tychus, usually. 
are you doing like a, a kind of a two stack rule for yourself where you know maybe you're know, not blinded like right now you're missing some health are you holding off on that first blind because you want to make sure you have that second blind already in the bank uh no i'm not necessarily holding on to it for that reason i'm just holding them for a better time to use the ability um if that makes sense oh that gust into the corner here and just chase them <laughs> all down but it's Towers of Doom, of course, and so a lot is still on the line. Anything can kind of happen on this map, and that's the cool aspect of it. Is there anything as the enemy team's builds have developed that you feel like has changed the way you're playing, Johanna? Anything you fear over there? Um, Not really. I would say the only thing I would be scared of typically is like Giant Slayer 16 on Hanzo, but uh, Hanzo actually opted for Q-Build this game, which is a bit interesting. Um. But no, the threats really weren't there. Even with the QEQ Diablo, like, as long as I'm good with my iron skin management, it's not that big a threat for me. So, again, it was like a little bit of a softball Johanna game for me. It was, as long as I'm top of my comms and rotations, then uh, shouldn't have any problems. You grabbed up the blinded by the light talent. What? Yeah, that was just a buff. It's win rate. I don't think it's good. I just... <laughs> <laughs> that's fair things seem to be ending of course you know in the live broadcast we couldn't see the chat uh but we did get to see falstead fly heroically into the enemy's base there uh, in the final moments uh if if you had picked perhaps a serious talent in the final moments which one would it have been all right well now that you asked me i actually do think it's good i i first said that just to kind of uh smurf it and not let people in on the know-how but oh really no, i think yeah i think that talent's insane actually i think it's really strong um i think i think a lot of people are catching on i think before people would pick indestructible like in old johanna people kind of evolved to picking radiating faith to increase blood shield stun for that like game ending potential sure but i think the sh the ally shield is like the easiest to play and the most guaranteed value and the most consistent and with two stacks, right, you've got the uh, cooldown of this ability by eight seconds. So that's that's got to count for something on the usability of it. And I, I guess it's worth noting, you know, we just sort of acted like this was 2019 and, and moved on. But uh, you were picking Blessed Shield. So no Heaven's Fury kind of level 20 let's win Johanna play. Yeah, I mean, that that build got nerfed. Um, the other factor is just main tank Johanna. I think it's important to have a CC, otherwise your DPS are kind of just annoyed with picking Johanna because it's like, hey, you don't create any opportunities for us. <laughs> That's fair. That is, and you were operating as main tank here. Is, was there mm -hmm. was there ever a chance that uh, there was going to be a double soak Johanna at this at this stage of her balance on Towers of Doom? Um, it's possible. I think we've kind of grown out of that phase though. Okay. Um, because we definitely played that a lot last season, but. I think Johanna just lends more to main tank now. Awesome. Well, thank you for the rundown on Johanna here. It was a great game to see from this perspective. Everyone at home, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, ring the bell. And we will see you soon with more Learn to Play content for Here's the Storm and the CCL.